Today in the news, Nvidia finally breaks the seal and AMD's future looks bright. What's up guys, I'm Snows and this is your boot sequence. Let's get started with Nvidia. With all of the cooler designs leaked that have popped up in the last few months, we were wondering if the company would pull a U-turn on it at the last minute. Well, it looks like they won't. In their latest update about Ampere, the company released a small video talking about the cooling for the 3000 series of GPUs. Now, the video is mostly showboating what Nvidia thinks they did, aka revolutionized cooling for their GPU design. They talk about the problems that come with a short PCB, aka a more condensed power delivery, and creating a PCB that would avoid crosstalk as much as possible, which is easily done with more PCB layers. They also mention a new thinner and stronger spring system that would prevent having to use the usual springs on every screw. They instead are using a spring-loaded plate to create pressure to hold the cooler steady. They also touch on the power connector. Yes, it's now the 12 pin, and yes, thankfully, Nvidia will provide an adapter for it, but strangely, it sits at an angle on one of the edges of the PCB. So if we look at the card front on, it'll be routed like this. Now, the last thing that I want to touch on is the fan on the back. I knew that the second fan had a different design, but I still thought it would be pushing air down. The photo was just too confusing for me to conclude that it would actually pull air because of the shadows. Well, Nvidia confirmed that the fan would pull air towards the top of the case to be exhausted out the back. Now I saw some comments saying things like, wow, so we're just making the CPU hotter? Well, if you use an air cooler, sure, but that air would have still traveled upwards to be exhausted, so all it does is really facilitate the process. Something I haven't heard people mention is simply how Nvidia is kind of creating an unnecessary problem that they can then again solve. As is, the Radeon 7 when overclocked is already Already a baseboard heater at around 400 watts, but its stock cooler, while a little loud, can still take care of it. You can take a look at Timmy Joe's video on the subject. Also, you should check out his poster board PC case while you're at it. It's pretty awesome. Anyways, I'm positive that most add-in board partners will have designs that are smaller, overclockable, and that don't sound like a rocket engine. What do you guys think? Next up in sort of AMD news, the legendary Juan Usmus, the creator of the DRAM calculator utility for Ryzen, just released the CTR or clock tuner for Ryzen 3000 and Ryzen Threadripper 3000 CPUs. His utility goes through multiple rounds of overclocking slash undervolting to tune your CPU settings automatically. Now, Linus Tech Tips made a video on the subject and tested it on a Threadripper CPU. While the utility does work better for CPUs with a lot of cores, I think Linus got around 10% from a Threadripper CPU. One Osmus actually tested his utility with a R5 3600. His results? Well, he got about a 7% increase in performance while decreasing the power by about 10%. Perhaps with a boost like that, Ryzen 3000 will be a great option for years to come. Also in AMD news, but this time I'm a little bit late on it, we got some information on the upcoming roadmap for AMD. Now, AMD usually has two branches in the consumer market, the CPU only strain, AKA Ryzen on the AM4 socket, and the APUs equipped with Vega, both for the AM4 socket and in notebooks. Well, it looks like 2021 and 2022 will be different. In 2021, AMD is introducing a new strain of CPUs in the form of Van Gogh. From leaks and rumors, Van Gogh so far is an 18 watt CPU that couples Zen 2 and Navi 2. The CVLM part probably means computer vision and machine learning. It will also be the first platform to feature DDR5 memory. With the 18 watt leak, this probably means it will be in the mobile segment, but just like Renoir, desktop versions will probably follow. As for 2022, it looks like AMD will include graphics directly into their top end CPUs through the codename. Raphael lineup. It will likely use the Zen 4 architecture at 5 nanometers, since Vermeer will use Zen 3, and so will Warhol. The Navi box is also blue instead of red, which makes me think, and I'm just speculating here, that it will probably be a uh, Navi 3X product. And that is pretty much it for the catch up, guys. Hopefully, you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about today's stories. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here. To subscribe to the channel, stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.